Hello everyone and welcome to Bulletin Bites, your podcast from the Bulletin Box. I'm your host Sivo and as always we have another person on our show to talk about different learnings they've gained over the years and share those learnings with us. Today I have with me Pamela Wigglesworth. She is an international communication consultant who works with senior executives across industries. She talks about how to make a good executive presence. Now, I don't know what that is. Let's ask Pamela about it. Hi, Pamela. Welcome. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. And I love that we're going to have this opportunity to talk about executive presence because so many people go, what is it? Exactly. What is it? So exactly. give us a chance to share what that is because I know people have seen it, but we need to put words to it and teach them what they can do to then elevate their executive presence. Right. And that is exactly why we are doing this, doing this virtually today, because yes. you are on, in Singapore, we are in Singapore, and in normal circumstances, you would have met in person. Yes. But because you also speak about how to make big impact on small screens. Now, yes. in the last one year, the world has changed drastically. We would have never imagined to have lived through times like this. And communication has changed drastically. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would definitely would like to get your inputs on how to communicate better, how to communicate with much more gravitas, how to get the message across the board, across the internet. I love it. I love it. Well, you're absolutely right. So there's no doubt, you know, you, unless you've been living under a rock for 365 days, we all know that the whole world has been disrupted as a result of COVID. And because we're no longer able to meet face to face, or I should say in person, be it for business or even family gatherings, we've moved from this scenario of being able to be in the same room with somebody to this small screen, this small screen being Zoom, Team, uh, let's say LinkedIn is even doing something, but Skype right. uh, and WhatsApp. So what we've lost is that human connection that we're able to make when we're in the same room. And yet most people think just because we're doing business on, you know, online or over this medium, that it's the same, but it isn't. And so we need to be clear about what is executive presence and what's the change or what's the impact now that we're having to communicate through the small screen. So let's start with what is executive presence. Exactly. Like right. I understand presence. When you walk into a room, I have a presence. I mm -hmm. exert my presence by the way I dress, by the way I walk, how I sit, how I shake hands. But all that doesn't happen on a, on a virtual meeting Absolutely. like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. And see, here's the difference. This is where I really want to drive this home for people. Because what you've just described are pretty much things that we can see that are demonstrated through body language. And so the brain, the amygdala, the lizard brain is making decisions based on what they see and how you act and trying to decide whether you are a friend or a foe, are you a threat or are you safe? And so we see that we can pick up those subtle nuances when we're in the same room with people, but we can't when we're not on the same, you know, in the same room. So if we backtrack and say, really, what is executive presence? Some right. people, the French would call it that je ne sais quoi, you know, yes. that little mystery, something that you don't, right. you can't put your fingers on it. Right. You know, if we were to ask Alicia Keys, she would call it that little something, something, you know. <laughs> and then we were to talk to Simon Cowell when he was doing the reality show, the it factor. Yes. People say, yeah, you've got it. You've got that it factor. Right. But people would then think that executive presence that is that it is one thing when it's not. In a nutshell, if we really want to break it down, uh, you know, simplify it, it's your demeanor and your actions that demonstrate to others your leadership abilities that then make you them feel that you are worthy, notice that word worthy, to be respected and to be followed. So right. if we talk about three things that your listeners would say, well, what is that? It's simply, as you put it, your gravitas, which yeah. is your behavior, your demeanor. Right. It is how you speak and what you say. And lastly, what is your appearance? And that means your, um, your appearance, your attire, and how you show up in this online space. So it's about building this sense of trust so that people will want to uh, be draw, they're actually drawn to you and you'll right. see it. You've been to those networking events, those conferences where there's somebody that everybody's around them and you're going, right. who are they talking to? Who, who 
is that? Who is she? Wow. Wow. Yeah. He looks really good. Oh my God. That guy looks great. You know, <laughs> and he may not be the most handsome person in the room, but right. there's something about him that you're just drawn to him. You just want to be, he's pulling you in. You want to breathe his air. Right. Right. And so you're going, what is it about him? He's got this magnetism about him, his charisma. Yeah. He's oozing confidence. Yeah. And so that's what we want to now say, how do we do this? when we're not able to be in the same room we've right. got to have a new skill set right to be able to demonstrate or elevate our executive presence so, when it so comes you, to speaking online right so you broke down this in three uh folds first was gravita second mm -hmm. was how to choose my words very carefully and mm -hmm. third was how my presence is so let's take them one by one how okay. would you describe gravitas now does that mean i need to lower my voice <laughs> well, that, we're going to come to that one. That's the second one. Okay. okay. So gravitas is about your behavior. Okay. Right? So if we, as you said, if we were meeting um, face to face, you would shake my hand. You would give me eye contact. Right. You would smile at me and I would pick up that your gravitas, your behavior. Right. And how you convey your confidence. Now we have to do things a little bit differently in this yes. screen. So now I need to do different things. I need to now focus on my core competencies. What are the characteristics that people can see about me through the screen? Right. So one would be, uh, let's talk about inclusiveness. Am I including others on this call into the meeting? So I might say, Tiwa, what do you think about, you know, what are your thoughts? So it's not just going to be me being a talking head, talking to everybody in the meeting. I'm going to bring other people in. Am I using their name? Everybody wants to hear their name. Right. So are you using people's name? Okay. Mm. Are you asking their opinion? And you might get them involved in the very beginning of the meeting by simply saying, you know, we're going to be talking about ABC today and I'll be looking for feedback from you. So, you know, uh, any at particular time in the meeting, I might call on you to ask you to share. So right. we need right. to be inclusive. Then we need to demonstrate confidence. Mm. And that comes through how, how we sit, our posture. Are we sitting up, you know, right? Um, and am I demonstrating my decision-making abilities, you know, by being making quick decisions right. or am I waffling back and forth? Okay. Yes, because it is sometimes so disorienting looking at a camera. Do I look at the camera? Do I look at the person who's talking? And then it gets you all confused because your eyes are now moving. And yes. in a in a in person, like you said, in an in person meeting, I'm looking the person in the eye. There mm -hmm. is a direct connection, but now there is no direct connection. My eyeballs are moving here and there. But you've got that's what people have to work on. So right. I can yeah. see you in the lower, you know, on my screen, obviously, but I can see you in my peripheral vision. So that means I'm going to just continue to look at the camera because that's the only place I can build rapport. So that we right. talk a little bit more about that in your, you know, in your appearance. But one more thing about behavior yes. that I think is so important, and I think this is so important for senior leaders yes. who have a team of, of IT people or maybe a PA who is helping them to get on the system. Yeah. You know, in this day and age, executives, senior leaders, they all need to know how to manage the tech. The moment the PA leaves the room and something happens and they're not able to get their, maybe they're showing slides, they don't know how to get that up on another screen, they end up narrating the tech. And we hear things like, okay, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, um, yes. All right, can, can you see my slides? Can everybody see my slides? So give me you know, a hands up if you can see my slides. Right. Well, if you've practiced that, you would know what that is. And that means if somebody says to you or says to me, hey, Pam, we're going to use a different platform, that means I better darn well go out and learn it before the call comes up. So people need to need to know Zoom comes up rather quickly. Right. But Teams takes a few minutes to kind of get up. True. That's so you true. will freak out and go, oh, my God, oh, my God, is it working? Is it working? I don't think it's working. Yeah, and then you want to hit it again. <laughs> and upload it again when you just have to wait. So right. manage your, learn to manage the tech, get online, spend about 15 minutes, have somebody show you and not just opening up a window, but actually connecting with somebody so that you can actually practice and they can see because you don't see what other people see. Right. So you have to practice it. So today your behavior has to be knowing the tech, showing up, um, using your core competencies, authenticity, uh, inclusiveness, confidence, 
Um, the list goes on and you just got to be able to demonstrate that through the screen. Right. And then you move into the next one, which is the, what I call your secret weapon is what you say and how you speak. Right, right. So uh, I just want to come back, but because when you were discussing uh, when a senior leader fumbles like that on uh, a very, very important presentation where there are 150 people waiting him to share the numbers of how great we did the, in the last quarter, it sort of drops, you know, the whole gravitas, the word is very important. It drops down. Yes, you know? because and, the, and the next thing they're going to hear is people are going to go, you're still on mute. <laughs> you're still on mute. Unmute yourself or you haven't turned your camera on. Right, right, well, right. So and you're right. It does focus, affect yeah. how people perceive you. Perceive you, exactly. And for somebody who is in a leadership position, is your perception as a leader, as somebody who demands respect, it's sort of, sort of, you know, it, it, it is important how they perceive you. Yes, and you're absolutely right. You hit on two words linked together. In At the senior level, mm. we talk about executive presence is really your leadership presence. Right, right. And how people perceive you. So what's your leadership perception? Right. What are you, you know, putting out there? Down to how you dress, how the background looks in your, in your you know, screen. Right. All of these are key. These are all part of the behaviors. Right. Are you showing up? And are you showing up when you literally show up? Yes. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are, and you, are prepared? you bringing energy to that meeting versus... Hi everyone, and you know, welcome back to our. Oh, if I sit meeting, like blah, this, blah, blah. oh my gosh, I <laughs> saw a lady do that the other day uh, to a speaker, and yeah. I, I wanted to private message her and say, could you show a little bit more respect and not lean on her? Now, if you're going to do that, the way to do that is this way. Hmm. You're still upright. Yes. You know, and tilt your head a bit. Yeah. But she was like all on her arm and I wanted to go, <laughs> just turn your camera off. I was a bit embarrassed, you know, yeah, yeah. because to be part of that group right. and to see people show up that way. I'd rather yeah. you turn your camera off. Very disrespectful. That energy. Yes, it really, really, really was. And I really mm. wanted to ping him later and say, I'm so sorry that some of our members was like that. But I said, no, uh, not my place. Not my right. place. Well, yes. I should, I should, I should be very cautious about that during our discussion. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I would need to, though. Yeah, really you're not going to go there. That's not your <laughs> <Yes>. style. Not <laughs> uh, your style. Coming to our second point, which is how to say and how to get my message across the board yes. without sounding repetitive. Like you said, being prepared is very important. Mm -hmm. My my confidence and my my uh, subject matter is very important. But how do I get it across? Okay, well, first of all, we want to have whomever's having a meeting is you need to be, you know, just as you would prepare for a face to face meeting mm -hmm. or in person meeting, you need to also prepare for your, your zoom meetings. So many people are showing up and they're not physically or spiritually or mentally prepared for that meeting. So in other words, they might be rushing from another one. And it's not like they're physically rushing from room to room, but they are energetically Yes. moving from room to room. Right. So in other words, they need to show up. That means giving yourself a break in between meetings. If you mm -hmm. can, do your best not to schedule back-to-back -back meetings. Give yourself 15 minutes. If it's an hour, make it 45 minutes. Um, and give yourself that, you know, go from the top of the hour, 1245, then maybe I'm going to start again at one. If you can, give yourself half an hour. Start at 15 minutes after the hour and then end at the top of the hour. So being physically ready, then that means I don't come to the next meeting or I finish with one and go, hi guys, uh, really sorry I'm late. You know, um, I just had to get a, get a quick, you know, bite to eat. You know, I'm sorry, I'm still eating my lunch. I hope you don't mind if I eat my sandwich. Hang on, I got a cough now. Not that I'm <laughs> demonstrating that. <laughs> right. Notice glass, not Keep water bottle. Keep it handy. Yes, but keep it nice. Right. Oh, yeah. No water bottles. Mm. None of this. Okay. Right. Okay. One cough. Hang on. <coughs> I should have put you on mute. That's that's my no no. My executive presence no no. Oh. Okay. So you know, but you don't know when that's going to happen. So you've got mm. to just be careful. Mm. So uh, I want people to show up energetically. So how you start your meeting will determine how the entire meeting will be. The energy of the meeting. So that means now 
I'm American and a lot of people think Americans want to be all rah rah and that's not the case. When I talk about bringing energy, I just want you to start the meeting with some energy. And that means, hey everyone, really excited to have you here today. Today we're going to be talking about the five things that we need to be doing to elevate our marketing um, with our teams around, around the world. So one of the things we're going to kick off with is blah, blah, blah. Notice just I'm using my voice to bring my tone up. Okay, so bringing energy to it versus, hey, today we're going to be talking about the five things that we can do about the marketing. Now, I if can I start sense that way. the difference. I can sense yes. the difference. Yes, it's your energy. So wow. your words and your voice are your superpower, especially in this arena. You must choose your words wisely because we need to have our meetings need to get shorter. So we need to get straight to the point but I need to create sound bites. I need to create those buzzwords that the people on the other side will go, oh, I get it. And then you get straight to the point. But I use my voice, I use storytelling so that people are engaged because they're burning out fast. We've been a year into, you year know, into to this situation of where we're working from home. Mm -hmm. So people are tired of, of having to be on screen all the time. Yeah. So it's for us as presenters, and I mean that, if you're the meeting presenter to hmm. bring the energy bring a smile start with the smile and that right. means smiling before everybody gets on be right. ready so that yeah. when they turn their cameras on they can see you and i see you and i welcome you one at a time great to see you hey sue love to see you brendan welcome you know whomever it is that you're inviting onto the call welcome them with a smile and then have a little bit of chit chat before you actually dive into the content because people will arrive late to meetings. So be ready for that buffer. Right, right. That's always, that's always the case. Like today, <laughs> uh, I, I want to tell my audience this, that today is the perfect day for us to demonstrate this scenario because I am not in the place where I normally record my Zoom meetings. So I took about five to 10 minutes, set up the camera, set up the lights around me, set up my background based on the new hair that I have. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So now that is the second part of it, like be prepared and my voice and the words that I choose, it sets the tone for the rest of the meeting. Yes. 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 And the third thing that you speak uh, spoke about was how, how I look my presence on that yes. little small chat window that people see. Yes. And you know what? Sometimes it is really small. You know, yes. and so that you make a good point right there. Here's what's happening. People think that because they're going to shrink themselves and make the slides, the presentation, that they don't have to show up or they don't right. have to look good. Now, when I say looking good, I simply mean, do you look worthy to be in front of your, your client? Um, I'm all for smart casual, but I'm not for sloppy casual. Okay, this just doesn't work for me. So when we talk about appearance is the last element, it's how do, what's my attire? Mm. Yes, we're moving into more of a casual environment, but if I'm meeting a client for the first time, I want to mm. think about, and this is the question everybody should be asking themselves, what is the impression that I want to leave on the other people? Sometime, uh, there was a couple ladies during, um, during our lockdown period that reached out and said they would like to do some collaboration. Now, here's the interesting thing. I can't tell you what they wanted to collaborate on, but I can tell you how they showed up. And one of them barely combed her hair. One was in a t-shirt that had holes in it. And all I could think of is, you want to collaborate with me? That's the first impression you're making on me? Right. You know, I was like, I, I, like I said, I can't even tell you what it was. And I obviously said no, because right. that's not how... If you are going to collaborate with me, I need to know that you have the qualities, the leadership qualities, and leaders need to show that. So right. that means no pajamas. <laughs> and if you're going to wear a t-shirt, have a something on standby. So for the gentleman, if you suddenly are told that you're going to need to get on a call in five minutes time, and you're maybe you're working from the, in the office, but you're still in a t-shirt, no matter whether you're at home or in the office, have a jacket ready, a neutral color jacket that you could just throw over your t-shirt. Right. For the ladies, I always say, have a little scarf that's handy. So I always keep one. If I'm in a, like say, let's say I'm wearing um, a solid color t-shirt, I'm gonna grab a scarf. Yeah. That would, you know, and I have two that will go with just about anything. And I'm just gonna go, okay, let me just put that on. 
and then I'm ready to go, okay? I'm also going to always, for the ladies, I'm always gonna have a lipstick handy. So at the very least, I can throw some lipstick in on it. Maybe I have a powder compact. I'm gonna look like that and I'm gonna still have my, my posture high so that my attire also matches my demeanor and my right. appearance as a leader. Right. Um, and the most important is what we're doing right now is eye contact. It's so important that I make eye contact with my camera lens, be it in your computer or on your webcam. Right. So if you're working with a computer, elevate that computer so that the camera, that little circle, and you're gonna talk to the circle, is yeah, eye about. level. And that's how we, we make uh, eye contact, build rapport with everybody on the call, no matter what country or city or where they're sitting. I have about four books under my laptop right yes. now to elevate it to this yes. level. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't take much. Now, here's the other thing. You want to make sure that if you're the books or whatever you're using, that it is stable. Yes. Um, what I'd like to suggest is people, if you have a printer at home or you have um, and you have the, the paper, the reams of paper, pull oh, out yes. two of those stacks of paper. Mm. And they're they're not going to move because what happens is if you bang your computer, you're talking, you're going to get this wobbliness. Okay, so make sure whatever you've got your yes, there you go. That's a good demonstration. <laughs> um, you've got your computer is going to be stable, and so that right. you're not you know moving about. So this is important because everybody is still looking here, and so as we talk about appearance, let's just talk about your if you're using slides. If you're using slides, your slides should be vibrant. There should be color to them. You should create movement if you can. Move people around your slides if you can. If I'm gonna animate something, maybe I'm gonna start in the upper left-hand corner and I'm gonna move my way around. It's just so to help people avoid that Zoom fatigue so that our eyes are not just staring at the screen, nor do people really wanna be looking at themselves all the time. So. Creating engaging slides will also help the appearance and help people avoid um, some of the Zoom fatigue that we're going through now. That is such an important word in today's day and age, Zoom fatigue, because you're mm -hmm. constantly on a small screen talking to mm -hmm. people, meeting after meeting, and eventually you come to a point where, you know, that little screen, does, is the, if it doesn't interest me, that will, which is outside my screen or my, yes. my, my kid would walk past by and I would look at my kid and then not look at the person who's talking because I'm not interested and I left the door open. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, there's two things. We've got distractions, lots of distractions happening when with um, virtual meetings now. We've got pets that are going to come in. You know, dogs might bark. Your cat might suddenly jump up on the computer. If you have a toddler, they don't understand why mom or dad has the, the door shut. Right, so exactly. we need to be prepared for that. Um, the other thing you made a point of is, here's the other thing that's happening and why we're having Zoom fatigue, is if we can't see our family and friends, we're connecting with them on this same scenario, this same screen. So there's no distraction. There's no, there's no change of the environment. And so that's wearing people out. So you're gonna notice even when you're doing networking events, People just seem lethargic. It's like, oh, here we go again. And I don't want to, oh, I got to turn my camera on. I got to see myself. People are tired of looking at themselves as well. Mm -hmm. So the birthday parties, the meetings, the business meetings, as even funerals are happening via this screen. So people have no change in the environment. We're not getting up and going from room to room like we would in a meeting. Right. So gotta just, this is why I say decompress. Give yourself time in between meetings so that you're not doing three or four hours back to back looking at that small screen um, right. and sitting for so long. Break it up. Right. Give yourself a break. It's seriously, we don't realize how these small little changes mm. can make us so involved. And you spoke about that earlier, which is being present emotionally, mm -hmm. spiritually, being present for that meeting, not just reading out the slides, yes. but actually presenting the slides. Yes, as we say, be present to present. It's, oh, you okay? said it. I think that's so, the bite we're going to use. Yeah, <laughs> we just have to be ready. Just as you prepare before, be prepared you know, beforehand. So as I'm doing coaching with clients, I'm not going to just get on the call you know, at the top of the hour. I'm thinking about what is it that we need to cover today? 
You know, what did we cover last week? How do I need to show up for them? What was the challenges? Were they in emotional state the last time I, I spoke to them? How are they doing today? What do I need to start with? And how do I need to show up right. to be there for them? Hmm. So we need to be present. And that means getting in the zone. Right. Like 10 minutes before. Right. And part of being present beforehand is simply one tip I like to share with everybody is yes. turn on your camera 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before. Set up it, set it up as if you're going to do a, a meeting right away. That way you get a chance to see what you look like. I get to see what does my backdrop look like. Is there anything? I've seen people leave their ironing board behind them. And I, I get that. I mean, we're, some of us are living in small spaces. Um, they're doing laundry and the laundry's on the bed. Uh, but we need to make sure that if the laundry's in the bed, that we can just move the laundry temporarily mm -hmm. so that we still show up professional. So right. check out in advance. We know that our cameras are now HD um, cameras. And so they see a lot more than you think. A lot of people think the camera's only seeing this right in front of me. Right. But I can actually slide out of the frame in, in front, but yet I'm still going to be in the camera. So this is where we get these people that are going... I'm going to just slide out of the camera and I'll eat my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and even though the camera's looking directly, right. we can still and, see them. And it makes for the greatest home videos. <laughs> it's, but we they, they only knew. You, Sheila, we can still see you. Yes, <laughs> yes. Or people who don't aren't wearing clothes, you know, Ooh. it's like, okay. We've seen um, enough of those videos on the internet now. Yeah, and hopefully people learn their lessons. Put but some they pants still, on people. <laughs> yeah, uh, and here's the thing about backgrounds. We also want to make sure that the background is appropriate. So we get that people are in small spaces and sometimes they don't have an appropriate backdrop mm. uh, somewhere in the house. So mm. they're forced to use the Zoom background or the Teams background or they find another image. Mm. So let's say I'm going to use a Zoom background or something mm. on Teams. Mm. I need to see what that backdrop looks like, what are the colors, and then I need to make sure that I'm wearing something contrasting. Right. So if the backdrop is dark, I want to wear something light and vice versa. Right. If I'm going to choose a backdrop or choose an image from the internet, or I might be invested in some um, <clears throat> stock photography, I want people to look for the resolution of those images to be 1920 by 1280. 1920 pixels by 1280. And this is a good stable um, image size so that the camera doesn't have to figure out what is the body and what's the backdrop. And oh, that's you, we get this you have, wavering. as soon as you move back, you almost dissolve in the image and you only see eyes or the residual of the glasses. If, and if that, yes, and it's if, freaky. If it's it really freaky. freaky. Or people have, um, there was a lady, she had like this red skull uh, animal skull and the skull was out from the wind from the wall but sometimes the backdrop was still there but you could still see the skull was picking peeking through and it was <laughs> creepy so you know or you get people that lean out you know they lean to pick up something and their head goes out of the mm. the frame it's just weird right. so you this is why i want people to turn on their cameras in advance 10 right. minutes before because here's the thing if you've been invited to a call and they put you in a waiting room you don't have a chance to see what you look like before. Yeah. So you better turn it on 10 minutes before, separate meeting, you're creating your own, just really it's a checkup. Right. Does my lighting look good? You right. know, and if you don't have uh, good lighting or if you're not next to a window, just invest in a small a desk lamp mm. that you can turn it on that's facing you. We want mm. the light in front of you, not right. behind you. Right, not, right. You're going to be in silhouette. Mm. You're going to be dark and everybody's going to wonder, are you in the witness protection program? <laughs> or some noir movie. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that the, They're hiding you know, their identity because that's what they look like. And so... But, but to be honest, things, there are certain meetings I would definitely would want to hide my identity. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes they do. But that's, that's not going to get you noticed. And see, right. this is my biggest concern now is that we're losing that ability to be noticed like we would if we were in the hallways and chatting with other people. We don't right. have the means to demonstrate our executive presence in person. So right. if we're looking to be promoted or we want to just be recognized, you've got to show up 
mm. big in this small screen. It's so important. Right. One last question I have. Now, I understand that you do these uh, workshops or you do these counseling sessions for people of C-suite uh, mm -hmm. who, who manage, manage these various industries. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who's just starting, uh, you know, why, why should I be concerned about how I look like? Why should I be concerned about how I tilt my head while talking to you? Because it's everything, you know. Um, if you are perceived as flying under the radar, you don't get noticed. You know, the squeaky wheel gets oiled. If you want to be recognized within your department, if you're looking to be promoted, if you're looking to get a raise, you have to be seen as a leader. Right. And that could be even if you're leading the janitorial department, mm. that's still being a leader. If you're the leader of the secretarial pool, you're still showing up as a leader. So mm -hmm. if you don't demonstrate your gravitas on the small screen, then you're just going to be lost with everybody else. And that might be fine for you. But if you're looking in this day and age where people are losing their jobs, who are they going to keep? They're going to keep the ones that stand out and that are memorable. The question is, how do you want to be remembered? And if you don't decide, it's up to you to decide what is that silent narrative that you want to put out to the rest of the world? Do right. I want to, even if I'm not, you know, the senior leader, I can still be in the meeting. I can still look professional. I can still show up. I can still look like I'm paying attention. Right. You know, and that's how I'm going to get ahead. That's how I'm going to get noticed and yeah. stay within that company. To be remembered after the meeting ends, after the laptop goes down and you go back to, oh, that person yes. maybe asked that question. Yes, memorable in a good way, not in yes. a bad way. Not the, not somebody who was looking at the Yeah, like or it. the ladies that came in with the t-shirt with the holes in it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because that's right. what I remember, not who ah. they were. You don't want to be a, you don't want to feature in one of those anecdotes. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't, you know, the slash, the slash. do not do this. Yeah. yeah. So we want to be, and you know, we're going to be working in this manner for some time to come. It's not going to go away for a lot of people. You know, a lot of the work from home environment is here to stay. Um, I know a lot in Singapore, we have companies that people are going back to the office mm. on a more regular basis, but they're right. still going to be working from home. So what I just want people to be aware is that, you right. know, you're still, it's still showtime. You need so to remember pandemic, every time it's showtime. Right. And, and people are making judgments. Uh, this is still going to happen because today, of course, we are lucky to have you in Singapore and I'm sure we are going to do one talk in person. I really want to meet you. But if you were not in Singapore, we would still want to hear what you have to say about this. And we would probably be doing this, even if it is not a situation like this, even mm -hmm. if you're not going through a pandemic, because the world is becoming smaller and smaller. And we yes. are collaborating with people from different parts of the world. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, it's the small things that add up, but sometimes it's one small thing that can really hurt you. So we really just want to make sure that people are aware, you know, executive, what is executive presence, why it's important to your career, uh, you know, uh, success, why it's important to you, how you show up as a leader, be it in your community, in your church, within your, you know, uh, you know your work environment, your home how people perceive you. Remember, we say we only get one chance to make a first impression. So what is that impression that you want to leave with other, bit, with other people? So I want to make it strategic. So I want to make sure I'm showing up on time. I want to show my sure my lighting looks good. I want to know what my sound bites are going to be when I contribute to the meeting. What are the buzzwords? If people are having short attention spans and we know that they are, then how do I grasp them? How do I get their attention with my words, with my voice to make sure that I remain memorable in a good way so that when they're, when the HR and the management start talking later on, they're going to say, who is that? Oh yeah. I remember so-and-so said this and we need to have them on our watch list for good reasons. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pam, for those really you know, we don't realize how important these small bits are unless mm -hmm. somebody puts it out to us like the way you did. Thank you so much. And Thank we you. would definitely want to have you back on our show to talk more about executive presence, to talk more about how can you make more 
presentable impact and not in a bad way so yes. before i let you go i want to ask something about my video skills cuz in the last half an hour that we've been talking i'm sure you've noticed some do's and some don'ts i would definitely want to pick your brain and get two of my do's goods and two of my don'ts that i did that i shouldn't have done as a vodcast presenter okay well i'm going to be honest with you for the yes. most part i'm looking at you here okay so i'm i'm really this and this takes skill is to really i was focus on you, you know i know you were moving okay but i'm listening to the conversation okay so i need to be present to hear you but i also know that the only way i can build rapport with you or anybody all around the globe is by giving you eye contact okay so if i can't if i constantly look at you like this where are my eyes yeah okay so uh i would say you've got the great voice so definitely use that you're engaging it's animated so here's what i do know you were not a talking head because i could see your body moving when we say a talking head you're just like this okay and you don't move out of the frame and your body doesn't your hands don't move you don't animate so <laughs> you are animated so i know that's a good thing so i know that your audience knows you're a real person right right so you also can laugh and so we want to hear that we want to hear that's authenticity coming through so as far as any don'ts i didn't look at you hard enough to say that's a don't <laughs> okay but what i did hear was okay if this person is engaging with me you know i don't know for sure whether you're giving me eye contact because i am looking at you this way or i'm communicating with everybody that way so mm. we have to use our voice right this is why and we say that's your secret sauce mm. voice and your words yes. are what's going to get you noticed and that is a good thing for you not to mention you also have a deeper voice and when you have a deep voice you automatically command authority so uh if our women who have like these high pitched voices we have to work with them to bring their voice down because a man won't sit through that a woman will put up with it but she's not going to get heard right. not like she wants to be heard so any time we have a message that's important we want to bring our voice down into right. our lower registry right. and that's what's going to get attention also i feel that if you speak for the for a longer period in time or at a very higher pitch it tires other people out mm yes because i have to focus right See, this is the thing about virtual calls we have to focus more to really get the message and you're absolutely right if you don't keep me engaged i will zone out people mm. you know people might be on the call here but how many times have you seen people looking to the right so not let's give an example i have a monitor to the right of me you right. see their eyes doing this right yes or they're suddenly they're over here we know that they're either doing something on online and the facts show or statistics show that about 65% of the population that's on a conference call is doing other work 43% is on social media they're looking at their facebook their ig accounts and the other 21% is shopping online so if we don't keep them engaged with our voice with our message we're going to lose them we've got to keep keep them wowed and this right. is where we take breaks and we we ask people to participate we ask for right. their collaboration what are your thoughts what do you think about that take a poll give a poll give them something to do so that right. they don't veer off right so, and if they have they come back yes <laughs> yes we want them getting back that's yes. the goal that's the goal but part of that will happen when you shorten those meetings as well there's right. less distractions that way right right so get your message right prepare before the meeting do yes. not lose time trying to set up the meeting uh, set up your light while you are on the meeting mm -hmm. and it, it's it's really small things that gets your job much more easier and gets your message communicated with much more vigor with much more gravitas and much yes. more authenticity yes yes, yes. Yes, that's and that's what we're looking for. You thank know, you. That's how we're going to keep you. people engaged. So yes. thank you. We would like to know uh how can we get in touch with you? Great. Thank you for asking that. Um people can find me either on LinkedIn um and uh, my LinkedIn account is under my name Pamela Wigglesworth so you'll be able to find me. And there's believe it or not there's more than one Pamela Wigglesworth but I do <laughs> have that that uh that name that username. Also on um 
IG or in Instagram, you can find me as Pamela Wigglesworth Coach. Or they can, there's small snip, snippets that we put out every other day on tips on how to improve your executive presence or presentation skills. Lovely. Or if they want more information on coaching, please just private message me or reach me on the website, which is experiential.sg. E-X-P-E-R-I-E-N-T-I-A-L dot S-G. And I would love to chat with you. Perfect. And we will leave all these details in the description box on our different social media. So guys, please do follow us on different social media at the Bulletin Box. Find us on YouTube at Bulletin Bites. And you can also find us on different IG and LinkedIn uh, accounts. So thank you again so much. I haven't thanked you enough. Thank you again, Pamela. And it's been my pleasure. And I will see you guys with another such inspirational talk, another such talk which can help us navigate through life in a much more better way. Thank you so much. Thank you.